I'm Bobby J. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about 2025 Ram Heavy Duty. Now, the last year or even two years, many of you have been complaining about old cabs, outdated, inferior six-speed transmissions. Well, there's been a number of rumors floating around about Allison's going into Rams, the ZF, and, well, it's looking like the rumors are less of rumors and more so fact. We're talking about discontinued contracts, discontinued production, and what is this ZF Powerline 8-speed all about? Is it a good thing for Ram or is it a bad thing? We're going to dive in and find out right now. So what we're gonna dive into, we're gonna dive in about the details of the 68 RFE, the details on the ASIN AS16RC, and the biggest thing is the details on this new ZF Powerline 8AT, I believe is the model number. What exactly is it? The specs, what are the gear ratios in it? What are some of these new things? They're claiming up to 10% better fuel economy. We're gonna look at some of that stuff. What's inside this transmission? That's what we're gonna get into. So starting off with the 68 RFE, been around for a long time with Ram at this point, behind the SO Cummins and dates back to a revised beefed up version of the automatic that came in the Hemi in the mid 2000s. <clears throat> so the thing about this transmission is it's inherently too small right the truth is maybe back in the early days of the 67 when we're talking 350 horse 650 foot pounds yeah but the the number one problem with the 68 rfe is the fact that the clutches are too small in it. it is not heavy duty enough um what's the saying with gas engines the old saying is there's no replacement for displacement well when it comes to autom automatic transmissions and clutches is there's no replacement for surface area right so if you've got a clutch pack in there that's this big versus a clutch pack that's that big um, you've got quite a bit of difference in surface area and surface area combined with hydraulic pressure is what gives you your holding capacity right and you know of course guys that have spent ten thousand dollars on their aftermarket billy badass 68 are going to say all day long that they'll hook up to anything and go pull whatever and then go race it all weekend whatever but when you start getting into a high performance area of something you start sacrificing reliability and what i mean by that is yes you know proven recipes in the old 47 48 re's at this point proven recipes in the 68 but ramping up those hydraulic pressures on smaller clutch packs it's not the same as having a larger surface area of gripping force like what's in an ASIN or an Allison in a true medium duty style transmission. That's why ASINs, Allisons can tow heavy day in, day out in 4,500, 5,500s, the heavier trucks and do it every day. And if it's taken care of, you get 200,000 miles on without needing to rebuild. That's hard to do with aftermarket stuff and high pressures and all that. So the, the biggest thing is, it's good to see that the 68 RFE is going away. I will just say it. I think that the idea of going to a single transmission, regardless if it's an SO, HO, 2500 HD, or a 5500, I think that that's a fantastic idea. Ford has already proven that. Chevrolet also, one single transmission. Good move. Get rid of that transmission and the inherent issues that it's had over the years. So then you got the ASIN, right? And the ASIN has been around for a long time with Ram. Same thing, just as long as the 68. It was in the chassis cab 07 and a half 
4500 and 5500s originally as the AS68 RC. I think a lot of people forget about the AS68 RC that was the original ASIN. So, like I said, long, long period of time here that RAM's been working with ASIN. And it is a, a good transmission. Uh, my personal thing is, though, is I have a love and hate relationship with my ASIN in my 22. Um, the thing about it is the inherent quirks with it is one, mine is extremely lazy. Mine is always in one gear too high. You're cruising down the road, 38 miles an hour, it wants to go into sixth gear. It loves sixth gear. It should be in fifth. It should, it should You shouldn't have to lock out sixth gear on your own manually. And then of course, it's got no RPM. And as soon as you want to go 42 instead of 38, it's got to then downshift to fourth gear and want to try to take off like a rocket. Uh, so that is a huge gripe. The second thing is the huge defueling gap between first and second gear. Um, I, I find this to be one of the most annoying things other than the tuning about the ASIN. <clears throat> it, on a day-to-day -day basis, that huge gap is, it just sucks. That's all there is to it. I've heard rumor has it, some people try to say it's better. It's a shorter gap in the pickup versions in the chassis cabs. I doubt that, but I, I can't confirm or deny that. Yeah, that huge gap, that huge defuel event that happens for it to gear change one to two, it sucks. Um, that The tuning and that gap between one and two is probably the number one thing where I'm, I would say good riddance. Good riddance to the ASIN. Um, you know, the ASIN has had a great reputation. It was a breath of fresh air to finally see a transmission that, frankly, was not built by Chrysler. Um, and to see them bring in someone else's transmission with a good reputation was, like I said, a breath of fresh air. And it has proven to be a great transmission as far as reliability. But, of course, we have in 22, we have the K1 snap ring debacle. Um, and I would say making a change and getting away from ASIN and going to something else, it's right for the pickings, right? The K1 snap ring deals really put uh, a damper on the reputation of ASIN. It is no longer so much known as the bulletproof, heavy duty, day in, day out towing transmission. A lot of people now are gun shy on the ASIN because of the, if you didn't experience the K1 snap ring, uh, just hearing about some of the rumors of it. I, for one, I had two failures in the same truck on a K1 snap ring. So I'm, I can definitely, uh, I can definitely bark on that issue. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is with the ASIN is the relatively low mile, uh, fluid interval. We're talking 30,000 mile fluid change and a 60,000 mile fluid plus filter change. Um, that's pretty low, you know, and the fluid's pretty costly. You know, I'm not going to gripe a whole lot about the cost of servicing things, but compared to modern day of what some other transmissions are, again, bringing back that 68, 68 is like 60,000, if I understand correctly, uh, service intervals. So in today's modern age, it is definitely easy to say the ASIN has a quite low service interval. Now, the goods about the ASIN is that was a huge thing over the 68, especially the older 48 RE, is how the torque converter locks up in second gear and the truck takes off and pulls hard. I, I will say that's my favorite thing about an ASIN is, uh, and driving my 22, is hooked up with a trailer, you get through that god awful gap between one and two, hit second gear, then hit lock up, and bam, she just shifts almost like a standard transmission and stays locked up all the way all the way up to high gear and uh it, it pulls strong that is probably the number one thing about a nascent but here's the deal at this point that is the new standard in all these medium duty transmissions um so that's no longer anything new exciting 
they're all locking up in a pretty low gear and staying locked throughout the years, letting you have that direct drive power that the stick trucks always used to have an advantage over the automatics is that fluid coupling. Well, come a long way with these automatics. So the old a ASIN, um, while it's a pretty good transmission, I will say I am all in with Ram on dumping the 69 RC. And now the transmission that we really want to talk about. What will more than likely, probably 90% sure, will be in the 2025 Ram HDs, the Zia Powerline 8-speed. Now, one, one thing that people have criticized about the ZF 8-speed is that since it's already being used in the gas 2500 6.4 Hemi, that it is not able, the specs say it can't handle diesel power. That would be correct when you're speaking about the 8-speed that's behind the 6.4 Hemi, which is the 8HP75. Completely different gearbox than the new Powerline Medium Duty series. It's like comparing the 68 RFE to an ASIN. So, the thing is, this is actually kind of a really good match. Stellantis, Chrysler, and um, ZF. Because the thing is, they actually have a pretty good relationship. Uh, Stellantis is using some of ZF's designs already. They're already building transmissions under the Chrysler name, the Torque Flight brand name. The Torque Flight 8 speeds, my understanding, are a ZF design. Um, so jumping into what this power line, which is the medium duty new transmission from ZF, what are some things about this transmission? Well. The first thing I'll tell you is it is capable of having dual PTOs on both driver and passenger side, which is pretty cool. Maybe not so much for the 2500 short bed crew cab guy, but for the guy running a 5500 service truck, that could be a pretty cool option, being, a, being able to have dual PTOs. Not only that, they are able to handle 500 foot-pounds of torque delivered to the PTO versus, say, the ASIN that is 250. Uh, the next thing very interesting is a 57,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating is what that transmission is rated for. In fact, they even claim that that transmission can be used all the way up into what they call a baby class eight application. We're talking about a pretty big truck. Next thing is they're talking with the way that their transmission shifts, the way the torque converter behaves, and they're saying lock up just after launch, which is a very interesting concept. Um, again, like we talked about with the ASIN, what the ASIN brought to the table uh, early lockup is they're talking about right after launch. Well, the ASIN doesn't do it until second gear. 15% better acceleration over a comparable six speed is what they're claiming. Hey, pick up and go. Sounds good to me, I like it. 10% better fuel economy. That sounds good too. Now, one thing is, is we're gonna lose the old column shifter. The It has a electronic shifter. This is, I mean, you're talking electronic transmission to the max here. And it'll have probably some sort of rotary dial, like in the 1500, some sort of setup like that. But guaranteed basically that the good old column shifter is gonna go bye-bye. Um, next thing is, is Lifetime oil filter, and we're gonna get into this here in the next part we start looking at some data sheets, but their lifetime oil filter, this is again, compared to the ASIN, that's a big positive, your service intervals. Uh, now, some features that this transmission has that's proprietary to it, uh, DRD is what they're calling it, which is shifting from reverse to drive while the vehicle's still moving. And I don't think this is a huge deal, but they're trying to claim that the motion, reverse, back down to drive, and you're supposed to come to a complete stop if you're doing it correctly. Um, they're trying to say time saving is turn the dial, R, D, R, D, right? That sort of thing. And you can even still be rolling a little bit. Interesting concept, let's see how it actually works in the field using it. Uh, skip shift, now this is one that I'm excited about. They are claiming the skip shift feature in this transmission, it selects 
the optimal gear range for what, you know, throttle input, speed, load behind the vehicle, that sort of thing. Um, but it is able to, which this is not new, downshift from one gear and actually skip a couple of gears and downshift into a lower gear. Not a new concept, but what is interesting about it is the upshift. It is claiming, ZF is claiming it upshifts and can skip gears. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, 10 speeds and stuff, gosh, I just, um, I don't have really any experience with the 10 speeds, but um, you know, I already noticed going from the, an older four speed automatic to the six speed ASIN, more shifting and everything. I like this idea of being able to, when the truck is empty, as I'm throwing out a scenario, the truck is empty, it's not heavy, about maybe being able to jump some gears and so that you don't have that eh, 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 right? Kind of, uh, that could maybe get kind of annoying, at least for me, you know, that's subjective, but uh, I don't really want to drive a vehicle that's constantly shifting. Now, the next thing is the hill holder feature. What they're claiming is, is that the transmission will actually apply power to I shouldn't say apply power because I don't know exactly, but that if you take your foot off the accelerator and you're pointed uphill, that the transmission will not allow the vehicle to roll backwards. That's why they call it hill holder. Pretty simple. Interesting. Uh, let's see how that works in the field. Next is the trans will shift to neutral when stopped. This is an interesting feature. Um, is you're sitting somewhere and you got your foot on the brake holding it in drive. Uh, long stoplights, uh, Taco Bell, whatever, right? The drive through, uh, and it will actually shift itself into neutral. And they claim that's one of the things that helps with fuel savings is that you burn less fuel in neutral than you do drive. Interesting concept. I like it. The other thing I personally like about that, I'm not so much concerned about the fuel savings, I like the heat savings. That's a pet peeve of mine. People just sitting there holding their foot with it in drive. Us uh, so, old uh, 47 and 48 guys, we're always watching that temperature gauge. And so um, you're just sitting there burning on the converter lightly, just sitting there holding it in drive. Uh, so yeah, I do like that feature. Now, another thing is, is we got a little bit of a clash here we see on some specs. Uh, ZF is claiming a maximum torque input into the trans of 1,000 foot-pounds. Well, we're, we're seeing a little bit of an issue here of RAM it's currently at 1,075 on the HO. It's like, well, a little bit of an issue. Now, I personally think that will work itself out in the fact that this transmission has a 57,000 pound GVW. I mean, it's huge. Where right now, the 5,500 max tow, the 3,500 max tow HO truck is what? Sitting around 44,000 is what the factory rating is. So if numbers are similar to that, let's say 45, 46, 47, somewhere in there for the 2025s as they try to push maybe some higher numbers to compete with Ford and whatnot, you're still talking about an estimated gap of 10,000 pounds GVW up to what the max is that ZF is saying. And with that being subtracted from the GVW, what the likely of the Ram GVW is, I would say that's probably going to be fine to have that extra 75. Again, that's speculation on my part, but knowing power versus weight, I know that weight is actually usually more of a concern than all-out power, as long as this all-out power number is at least, at least something reasonable. Okay, looking at some numbers here, we see out of all three transmissions, the 68 has the tallest first gear. Now, what's interesting is reverse is really low. I didn't realize that. Uh, 0.82 in fifth gear, 0.63 in sixth gear. So that is actually so somewhat similar in fifth gear as the power line. Now, moving over to the ASIN, we got obviously a little bit lower first gear, a uh, little bit taller fifth gear and about the same on six gear. Now, uh, reverse is slightly taller. Now, it's interesting if you read right here, 
850 to 900 foot pounds is the range that is possibly suggested as what it says as an application of the 16 iron RC. We don't really know, but it goes to show that look at where RAM is at today at 1,075, and those are what the numbers are possibly for the ASIN. I don't think the 1,000 foot pound on the power line is going to be any kind of an issue. Now, switching over to the power line, we see first gear is really low. Um, hoping that this skip shift feature, maybe I would even sometimes wish I could lock out first gear in the ASIN. Um, hopefully there'll be a, maybe a way to lock that sucker out. Um, but it's interesting, you know, you go through then, sixth gear is still a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, seventh gear actually has a similar ratio of the 68, and then we've got just a pinch, I don't know if you can even hardly notice, a tenth higher ratio or lower ratio on overdrive um, and reverse is pretty low on that transmission so there's our numbers right there now i just want to point out this is from zf's website on the power line it says that the new automatic power shift transmission guarantees with its torque converter eight gear steps and super fast gear changes a high degree of dynamics Boy, I hope so. I hope that they hold true to that line right there because I'm excited about a quick, crisp, shifting transmission. Going into 2025, I'm pretty excited about this change. Like I said, I'm excited to see the 68 go away. Um, this is, you know, ZF is claiming quick, crisp shifts out of this transmission. They're really pushing the fact that this transmission is efficient and fast. 15% better acceleration over comparable six speeds. Gee, I wonder what six speed they're talking about. Um, you know, all these things are things that I see as a huge benefit as compared to the ASIN. Again, talking about that nasty gap between one and two on the ASIN. If this transmission, this power line does what they say it is, I think we're going to have a really smooth, responsive, quick shifting pleasure to drive 2025 ram and beyond i think this is an excellent move on ram's part um and production of this transmission is supposed to be in the u.s is my understanding uh i'm all i'm all in i'm all excited i think this is like i said this is an excellent move well, there you go. There's all the information that I've gathered on all with what we know on the other two transmissions, but more importantly is what we know now about this power line transmission. I'm really excited. Rumor has it production has already ceased on on new units of the 68 from the factory. The contract with ASIN has already been terminated. I think this is happening. I would bet the farm on this that we will see this power line transmission zf is ramping up production getting ready to be able to mass produce this gearbox the the writing's on the wall um, and again i'm excited about it i think these are all good choices this is all well played out i think an eight speed is a perfect setup i'm not on board with this big 10 what's next 12 13 18 full of road rangers in these trucks i mean uh, I, I think that the eight speed concept is great. I mean, I hardly ever find myself not having enough gears with my six speed, but, um, there has been a, a couple of instances in the mountains pulling a trailer where, hmm, kind of wish maybe there was one more right in here, but that's where the eight speed I think is going to be a, a perfect recipe. So good job, Ram. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to drive it for the first time. And maybe get one ordered now down below in the description section i put in zf's website or a, a link to their youtube video where they explain all of this and give you a full rundown on the new power line eight speed check that out if you're really interested in this kind of stuff like i am uh, if you found this video entertaining beneficial and helps you hit the like button hit the subscribe button we'll see you on the next one